Today we're going to check out a pretty handy feature that's built into Marlin firmware. You can add your own custom buttons to your 3D printer. Hello everyone, my name is Chris, but you probably already know that and I have put it down here in the corner. Today we're going to check out a feature in Marlin firmware that can be pretty interesting to incorporate into your 3D printer design. And that's adding custom buttons. And I'm not just talking about adding items to your LCD menu that you can click on. You can actually add physical buttons to control different things on your 3D printer. I have a big project coming up that I have a lot of learning I need to do to incorporate several different things on my printer. So I thought I might as well make a video on the odds and ends that it's going to take to get my project complete. And the custom buttons is the first part that I wanted to tackle. So this is actually pretty straightforward. All you have to do is find a button, plug it into your main board, set up your firmware, and you're good to go. But I'll show you how to put all of this together. So let's jump over to Marlin and take a look at how to enable this feature. For this video, I am assuming that you already have a working Marlin configuration. We're just focused on adding the buttons here today. If you don't have one, I have a lot of other videos that explain all the steps that it takes to get one configured for your 3D printer. I will leave links in the description below. To enable the buttons, all you have to do is go to your configuration underscore adv.h file and search for button. You can use the control F feature to find it. And we come down to the custom button section. You can enable up to 25 of these buttons if you'd like, but the first thing you need to do is take the comment off of custom user buttons. From here, the options are pretty self-explanatory. The first thing that you really need to be worried about is what pin you would like to use on your board for your button. For this video, we will be using my Ender 3. This Ender 3 has an MKS Robin E3 version 1.1 board in it. And you can use pretty much any spare pin on the board that you wish. MKS, as well as other board manufacturers, have great documentation on what these pins are, and they are labeled on the front and the back if you need to know the numbers. Today I'm just going to focus on the filament runout pins, since I'm not currently using them on this printer, and that's these three pins right up here. You'll see them in the schematic shortly. And because we want to use those filament detect pins for our button, we just need to know that pin number. Most of the time, you can just head to the pins file to get this information. From your file explorer, you just head into SRC or source, and then expand pins, and then you'll have a list of all the different processors that Marlin supports. Our MKS board today is an STM32F1 processor, so we'll expand that, and then we can find our board pins file. Here is our Robin E3 version 1.1. If you take a look at that, there are some specific pins for this board, but most of them are going to be included in the common file, which is right above it. Again, these are specific pins for this board away from the common Robin board. You can see again, there's an include. I just want to make sure that you know that you have to kind of climb up the ladder on these sometimes to find the pins file that you need. So one more time, we'll go up again to the common file. And this is where most of the pins are going to be located. Again, this board has a few different open pins that you could use, but we're going for that filament detect pin. And there is a pin defined right here called filament runout pin at PB10. But to make 100% sure those are the pins that I want to use, we can pull up the file from the MakerBase MKS GitHub. MakerBase has almost all of their boards out here on their GitHub if you need information on them. This is the one for the Robin E3. We'll just go to hardware, and we'll pick the newest one for 1.1. And we'll just take a look at the pins PDF. Here's what the file looks like. Again, these are the pins right here that we want to use. And that's 5 volt, ground, and PB10. So PB10 is in fact the correct pins to use for our button. Back to our configuration underscore ADV, setting up the button. Right here, we're just going to plug in PB10. Next, you can set what state this button triggers in. If these pins are 5 volt tolerant, there is 5 volt available via these pins. You could go high. Most of the time, I just stay with going low. So we're going to use the pin and the ground pin. 
So we'll just leave this low, but make sure if you're going to use 5 volt that the pins are 5 volt tolerant. You should be able to find that information somewhere on the GitHub, no matter what your board manufacturer is. You don't want to blow up your board. You can decide whether this button press is allowed during printing. Most of the buttons that I'm going to want to set up, I don't want to enable for printing. These are mostly going to be buttons for setting up things to get you ready to print. So I'm going to leave that false, so you can't accidentally hit it and screw up your print. And for this video, I'm just going to use the stock entry here, G28, for home. This is just to give you an example of how you can use these buttons. And then on the button description, that's what will display on the screen after the button has been pressed. Just to give you an idea of what the machine's doing. Now, if you wanted to set up multiple buttons, you can just take the comment off of any of these, or you can copy and paste a new one down below. But you can see in the button 2 example right here, this shows you how you can concatenate multiple commands on one button press. Here we're doing some preheat for the bed and preheat for the hot end. They're just enclosing that command here in quotes, adding the options that you need to add to make that happen, and then separating them with a slash in. So you might have to play around with that a bit to get them to join together and fire off in order when that button's pressed, but it is possible. So keep that in mind. For today, again, this G28 is going to be enough to show you how to get this up and running. So once you've found your pin and you've enabled your custom user buttons, you can go ahead and compile and flash it to your mainboard. And as far as buttons go, you can pretty much use any one you want. Any simple switch will work for this. Basically, in this configuration, we're just grounding out the pin on the board to make this option happen. You can use these little arcade buttons, you can go with the bigger ones that have lights in them because lights are always cool, and you do have 5 volt right there on those pins that you can wire up to enable that light. For this, I just made up this JST connector with 5 volt ground and signal. Again, the 5 volt is only if we want to use an LED, we don't necessarily need it for the button. Just this simple arcade button will hook up ground and signal, it doesn't really matter which terminal you use. And that's enough to complete that connection and make the command work. And since we have our JST connector, we're just going to put it in that filament detect pin that we saw earlier. Follow that pins document for the correct orientation. We saw it was 5 volt, ground in the center, and signal. So now you've got your button plugged in. We've already compiled Marlin. You've put your new bin file on your SD card and booted up. The update is complete. Your button is already enabled, ready to go. So if we hit the button, it's going to start the G28 command and home the printer. And you can see on the display, it's telling you that it's homing. And remember, if you want to get a little fancier with your buttons, you have 5 volt right there. You can have some LEDs if you wish. There's more than enough current on that pin to support one of these lights. And that's really all there is to it. You have to enable the feature, find a button to use and some pins, enter your commands, and you're good to go. And now that you know that this feature exists in Marlin, think of all the things that you could do to incorporate these buttons. Maybe in your print farm or your enclosure, setting up a print, or when you go to remove all the prints. There's a lot of different things you can do here. There's also other features in Marlin that complement this really well, and we're going to take a look at those. But that will be it for today. So hopefully you found this helpful. I'll see you really soon on the next one.